Howdy, hello! Welcome back to my channel. Oh, and happy Valentine's Day! Mwah. I hope you're all having an amazing day full of love, light, and sweets. Don't worry, I didn't forget to tell you about Wings of Ebony. I'll explain that at the end. Heck, I might even dice this one up for you and give you time cards. That being said, last time we were together and I was on a vampire kick, we discussed the third installation in the Vampire Academy series, Shadow Kiss. Today we're taking a realistic journey. I know, I already know. This one's different. With Chasing Lucky, which turns out to be quite the clever little title. By Jen Bennett. It's a standalone, but she's penned other titles. And I will definitely be checking those out after this one. If this book can leave me feeling all fuzzy and giddy after it's over, I can only, I have high expectations for the other ones and I'm very excited to read those. Without further ado, let's get into the review. Our tale begins with Josie, our main character, and her mother pulling up into beauty New England. The place Josie grew up but her mother fears more than anything else. When Josie was 12, her and her mother started trekking up and down the East Coast going from state to state as a result of a blowout fight that her mom and grandmother had. She doesn't know what it was about, but she does know that it was probably about her. One night they just packed up their stuff and they never returned. Her family owns the local bookstore in town, previously having been managed by her grandmother and aunt. They've decided to go off on a journey in Nepal due to some recent events. Josie is solely focused on graduating high school so that she can move out west, the famous photographer father is, and continue learning because she also has a passion for photography. Josie's on a mission. That is until Lucky Kiris appears one night in the bookshop and rocks her world. This isn't the nerdy boy she claimed as her best friend when she was 12. This boy is dark, brooding, but slightly intriguing. Not so hard on the eyes either. Will the St. Martin love curse claim Josie in its tangled chaotic web? Only one way to find out. matriarch of the St. Martin clan. After getting into a blowout fight with her daughter one night, both her daughter and her granddaughter disappear into the wind only to darken the doorstep of Deirdre once in a rare blue moon. As it turns out though, there are a lot of misconceptions about her and she might not be as bad as she seems. He's like golden. In other words, a spoiled rich kid from the founder's side of town. He's entitled, pompous, and maybe a little bit psychotic, but don't quote me on that. I'm not a doctor. He's also the on and off again boyfriend of Evie, and a buttload of trouble, the dangerous kind. Josie's older cousin by two years, very eclectic, warm, and loving, despite believing in her family's love curse, but not quite a hundred percent sold on that idea. She is definitely cursed when it comes to her taste in men. That was toxic if I have ever seen it. It might have been up there with Carmel Hard and Mother. Deidre's daughter, Evie's aunt, and Josie's mother, and the town harlot. At least according to whispers. But when you're from a town as small as beauty, gossip is gospel. This is gospel for the fallen one. Winnie has definitely had some struggles when it comes to her love life, but rather than reflect on her public behavior and her broadcasted actions, she chooses to believe in her family curse full throttle, serial dating behind her daughter's back as well as judging her actions simultaneously. Though Winona does have an impressive amount of flaws, she, like most of you, I'm an exception. I'm a mermaid. Is human and all humans are flawed. This is a story about a girl named Lucky. How awesome is that name, yeah? Josie's childhood best friend before she skipped town with her mom. Because they were so close, when Josie randomly up and got towed out of town, he took it really hard, especially since this came so close to the accident that scarred and burned his face, coupled with the fact that he didn't even get to say goodbye. I guess that you could say he's a bit salty. 
However, when it comes down to it, he will protect her at all costs, even if it means taking the blame for something that he didn't do. Just so long as she doesn't leave town, again. Who's just looking for some familial stability. Her mom seemingly ghosts her own daughter in times of need faster than she ghosts her revolving door of dating app dates. They're constantly moving around and now she's back at her childhood hometown. She's shocked to find everything relatively the same, except for Lucky best friend when she was 12. He's definitely grown up and that is not how she left him. As she learns about herself and her family, she starts to open up to him and begins to discover that maybe her family isn't so cursed after all. Advice. Lucky is jealous of Josie because she seemingly gets peace and solitude whenever she is at home. Josie's jealous of Lucky because he has a big happy family that's close-knit and spends quality time together. Ian is really loving and she's always wanted that. Both think the other one just doesn't get how lucky they are. <laughs> to have the family that they do. But remember, it is always different when you step into the other person's shoes. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I will screech it from the rooftops until I no longer have oxygen in my lungs. Honesty and open communication are the best ways to have a solid foundation for relationships that you truly cherish. It's how they get nurtured and strong. It keeps them healthy and thriving. Never fear change. Sure, be nervous for the unknown, that's normal. But when things stay the same, life becomes stagnant. You're not living. Exciting life things happen if you just keep your eye on the horizon. It might sound scary, but to love and to be loved in return, what a joyous thing. I'm not just speaking romantically either. Friends, family, pets, strangers, not pet strangers and do not pet strangers. Pets, comma, strangers. The world just needs more light and love and you might be surprised at the results when you start putting it out into the world. Today I will leave you with this. Sometimes the wrong can point you into the right direction. Chase them lucky! Okay so you guys already know how I feel about realistic fiction. It hurts my feelings when I finish. Either it's too real or it's great and then at the end they just want to suck what's left of my soul out of my body. This one, that was not the case with Chasing Lucky. I loved it really from the beginning. Actually, if I recall, page 18 or 22, don't quote me on that, whatever. One of those two pages is when I really started paying attention to the book and I was wrapped. I told you guys on Instagram I have I was awake until 2.30 in the morning reading this book because I couldn't put it down. I literally felt warm and fuzzy after I finished reading it. I felt like this was my relationship and it was going great and I just, I had, I was on cloud nine and I was done reading it. Characters had great chemistry, there was some um, mother-daughter bonding and reconnecting and not so much a curse as more realizing that things happen due to the way you react to them. Yeah, I love this book and even the ending. It had its ups, it had the lows, it had the highs. And I, I really enjoyed this book and I will be keeping it and adding it to my bookshelf. And you know only things that I plan on reading over and over again end up having the pleasure, the honor of being on my bookshelf. Why there was never a review for Wings of the Ebony, how to be honest. Basically it was the parlance and the vernacular um, that was used in the book. You can see it immediately from page one and two. When someone grows up not being able to access, you know, like grammar and all that, they end up speaking in a certain way, the, their parlance, the vernacular, which is fine when you're reading a book like this, especially when the dialogue of the characters, like if that's in the dialogue of the characters, makes complete and total sense. But what threw me personally is that is how the book was written. 
it wasn't just the character's dialogue that had this particular cadence. It was the literal grammar of the book. And the other part that I found interesting was that when I looked at the author's, one of her live streams, she does not talk this way. So I, I don't, it was, it was weird for me. And I, I personally could not read this book. I got to page 33 and I felt like I hadn't learned anything other than one fact and that was kind of dragged out throughout the first 30 pages. So yeah, it was not for me. That doesn't mean that it's not for you. Yeah, and you know, that's that on Wings of Ebony. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to leave a comment down below and leave me some love so I can share my love with you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you know when I'm posting another sappy book review. And I will see you in the next ones. Goodbye, my loves. <laughs>